Hello everybody! So today is computer science day and we're continuing with our history of computers. So now we've moved into the era of personal computing. Last week it was data processing and so today it is personal computing. So let's go ahead and take a look at these notes here. First of all, what is the, what's the historical background for um, personal computing? It starts with digital devices going on the public market in the 1970s. This includes calculators and watches. Those were the primary uh, digital devices available at that time. But then personal computers become available in 1976. However, initial sales were slow due to limited software availability. After all, you didn't want to buy this expensive piece of equipment if you didn't have the capability to perform tasks that, uh, which it was capable of. Um, so you had to wait for the software to catch up a little bit before computers really took off. Now, what is personal computing? It is the use of a standalone computer powered by local software. What is local software? This is code that is kept on the computer's storage device. This, is, this stands in contrast to centralized uh, uh, processing that, or data processing that we covered um, last week. And that is the idea that all of the computations occur at the, a main computer and then different users are connected via via uh, a terminal and keyboard. This was an all-in-one package. The computer, the keyboard, and the terminal were all uh, at the same desk, if you will. Personal computing marks the second phase of the digital revolution, a 30-year period from 19, or actually is that, yeah, yeah, that's 30 years. No, it's not. It's 20 years. Oh, I can't do math. 1975 to 1995, okay? So for about those 20 years, this was the this was the heyday, if you will, of personal computing. This is when you really were isolated from everyone else. You had to um, uh, learn how to use the software. I mean, obviously you could take classes and all that, but there was no internet at this time. That is the next phase of the digital revolution. So at this at this stage of the game, it was all about what you could do. With your computer personally and you had to get your software uh, um, either um, in a floppy disk form or you had to write it yourself so somewhat limited now what's interesting about this time is that you see this rise in popular thought that power the power of computation was now moving into the hands of the people into the hands of the masses pretty soon you would have them rise up and uh, be at the forefront of changes in computations you don't really see that happening uh, that phenomenon happening happening at this time because there was limited connectivity there was limited interest caused by the limited connectivity were very social creatures and the fact that we couldn't communicate about these devices as effectively as as could be desired led to a decline in interest so that's where our next phase of the digital revolution takes off and that's what we will be covering next week which is the rise of the internet and cloud computing Thank you very much for watching. This is part of a series on the intro to computer science. As you can see, this slide is named that. Um, the, and these are just brief videos, each one building off of the next one. And, and uh, hopefully we will move on to something a little bit more hands-on, if you will, later down the line. But this, it's, it's necessary to lay the groundwork for where computers come from. All right. So, uh, Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.